Hey guys, it's Karina with Karina Loves to Plan. Welcome back to my channel. So this is a different view. This is me leaving Calgary and taking off as I head to the San Francisco Pen Show. So I'm going to do my best to try and summarize my experience of this whole show. But here is a quick shot of the Rocky Mountains as I fly over them. Like how beautiful is this airplane ride? And yes, I got the window seat. But really, this just goes to show my experiences with the San Francisco Pen Show, show you some of the footage that I took. I wish I had taken more, but this is what I experienced over the weekend as a first time Pen Show attendee. So here I am just landing in San Francisco and it's amazing that you're on the water and then suddenly you're on the runway. It's amazing really really cool and then the first person that i see when i walk into the hotel is drew brown he is exactly like he is on youtube and was so welcoming and so kind so i felt so lucky to have been able to run into him as the first person from the show and then here i am driving into town to visit tartine and this bakery was featured on somebody feed phil and look at these amazing, amazing pastries. So of course I had to get a couple. I got a ham and cheese croissant for my lunch. And then I have a pan au chocolat for the morning. And I got two more, which I will have at home <laughs> back in Canada. So then I walked around the uh, area a little bit. So I went to Mission Dolores Park which was actually a beautiful, gorgeous park. People were sitting, enjoying the sun. You get a great view of downtown and look at all those palm trees, but it was just such a relaxing place. And I know some people are, you know, worried about the crime here, but as long as you're diligent and aware, I think you'll be okay. But, you know, I really enjoyed my walk into town. <laughs> And then back at the hotel, you just saw Inky Rocks and Aiden Bernal and Annabelle and Mike of Independence. And there's just so many people that I hung out with this evening. And there's Corolla and just all of us hanging out, you know, at the bar, getting to know each other. And then there's Annabelle and Mike. I don't know what they were doing with the washi on their fingers, but it was just, just fun. And so great to meet all of these people and just have a great first night. And then shortly here, you will see Rich from River City Pen Co. And then you're also going to meet Rich and then his helper Warren and then Corolla. This was my breakfast the next morning, my pan au chocolat, which I needed because I drank a little bit too much. So Saturday morning here at the Westin Hotel at the start of the show. So just lining up here to get in my early access. There's the map and then the registration desk you can see all the people lining up to get in and here we are at the Kenro Esterbrook table there's Brian who I got a chance to speak to uh, a little bit later and then you have stationery and notebooks here and some more paper like you just you can see that there are still some vendors setting up at this time there's Van Ness um, and my video right now is a little bit disorganized because I'm just trying to get my bearings. But you see here some really, really lovely stationery and leather goods and notebooks. And then down the center hall, you actually see this is where the ink testing station was, which I did get a chance to see. And then there's drum ghouls selling all of their wares. Say good morning to Clarissa, the Snowy Studio. Uh, and all the gorgeous Leonardo's the pen show exclusive. Oh my gosh, with drum goals. Like, look at how pretty that is. I could spend all day at this table, Clarissa. Gorgeous. Thank you. And Clarissa is one of the nicest people ever. Thank you. And here I am testing a Pelican M800 at the Pelican table. Just look at all of the beautiful things here. But I've decided a Pelican M800 is in my future. And then looking at this beautiful, beautiful pen. I mean, this is way, way outside my budget, but one of the great things about pen shows is being able to see pens like this and actually hold them and touch them. Like, grab this it happened yesterday morning. Well, say hi, Kristen, from Fountain Telling. These are gorgeous. 
and way more organized than over there. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh gosh, I'm just looking at like you said, which is what this one yeah. versus the matte finish. Just look at the difference. That big part does not matter. So then down this hallway, you have some of the Nibmeisters. So you have Penrome, you have Bocamundo, and you have, I think, Matthew here. So there were some great Penmeisters down this hallway. And then this was the side entrance where you can see other vendors. And you can see at this time, it's busy, but not crazy. And then here I am at River City Penco. Uh, I met Rich the night before, and he's such a nice man. And then actually, I didn't realize you're going to see here right away how tall he is. <laughs> he's so tall but he does some amazing pen holders for the kakamori brass nib and i'm kind of sad that i didn't actually get one while i was there then next we have the atelier lusso table and i came back to this table like three or four times because i had been admiring his things for ages and i'm so glad that he was here this was his first pen show that he'd been back to in quite a while so that is atelier lusso by eric sands just gorgeous and then here I was at the Narwhal Ikaku table where they have their rotten pens and I got to try a couple of their nibs. So this might be one that I would have to save up for in the future, but like just the rotten gorgeousness. Ooh. Then next here we are at the Heinz Pen Company table. This is one by Jim and um, Francisco and Jenny were also there throughout the day, but I made plenty of visits to this table and then finally walked away with one of the pens that you actually see there, but I'll show this later. And then here we are at the Schoen design table by Ian Schoen. Look at all of those beautiful pens. What he's famous for, well, I say what he's famous for, but what he's, what I tried was the Monarch nib, which he prototyped last year. And it was so cool to be able to try it this year. And then here is Jonathan Brooks at Carolina, Carolina Pen Co. He's kind of known for just throwing all of his pens down at down on the table, and you kind of just have to scavenger hunt for these. And then here I am getting my pens ground or tuned and smoothed by Kirk of Pen Realm. I got to try a few nib sizes, but it was so cool seeing him work. One of the great things about pen shows now is like you can see how crowded it is and how packed it is, but you also saw all the dogs of the pen show, but this is when the general public were allowed in. And this is me with Eric Sands of Atelier Lusso. And then here we are at Toyoka Craft. So you can see there's a bit of a time difference from, you know, the first few snippets of the show. Like you can see here, Toyoka Craft don't actually have as much stock left. This is about like two o'clock in the afternoon on the Saturday. I had taken a few breaks by this time, which was very, very much needed so that you don't get overwhelmed. And then we have some stationery here. I believe this is, uh, oh, I forget the name now. Every day, oh gosh, I'm awful. I didn't get the name here, but you get a mix of really, really good stationery and pens at this show, which I really, really appreciated. And then I ran into Drew again, this time with his denim jacket and then some beautiful rotten vanishing points. These were not at all in my budget, but I could always admire how beautiful these look and then there's some pilot custom 823s just beautiful gorgeous work one of the things that i really loved about this show was meeting people so you have suhua and then you have jenny and francisco and then nadia and just i don't have enough pictures but i loved meeting everyone and then this was dinner before heading back to the hotel and then i see Drew and see why building something a pen show after hours it is Saturday night it is just after nine and I am exhausted from a very full but really fun day at the San Francisco pen show I have talked to so many people and I think the exhaustion from yesterday, yesterday was also a very long day, the Friday, but it's been so great. Everything that I was anxious about, but also excited about, um, 
I'm so glad that I came. The things that I was anxious about, for example, talking to people and having people to hang out with, it all worked out fine. I hung out with Corolla. It was like no time had passed since the Planners Gonna Plan conference. And then just talking to vendors and talking to other people at the show and people coming up to me and saying, hey, I know you from Instagram. And I love that. I love that. And um, spending time with makers and other people in the community. That was my favorite, favorite part of this show. And yes, I did purchase things which I will be showing in a haul in this video, but I just wanted to sum up my thoughts in this very, I guess, quick summary. So I purchased the all access pass for Saturday so I could have early access to everything from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. And I'm really glad that I did because it gave me the space to be able to talk to vendors and see everything at my own pace without huge, huge crowds. And then 10 a.m. came for the general public and everyone came in and it was so busy between like 10 and maybe lunchtime. And that was very overwhelming, fun, but overwhelming. And I needed a break. I was in decision paralysis for those two hours because I was just so overwhelmed. My senses were overwhelmed. So Corolla and I took a break, we had lunch and then I came back and I was ready to make my pen purchase, which I did and I'm very happy with it. And then after that, once I had made my first pen purchase, it was like the pressure was off. So the next few hours were just very relaxed and seeing everything again because there was no pressure for me to make any type of decision because I purchased the pen. That was what I came to the show for. I'd also had three pens, no, four pens ground. So three were tuned and smooth and one was ground into a, um, an extra fine. And then it, what was it? The afternoon just felt a lot more relaxed, kind of going where I wanted to go, seeing certain things. And then there was another pen purchase <laughs> in the afternoon as well as something from Tioka Craft. And I'll be showing all of those. But after the show ended, just had some time in the room and then went for dinner with Corolla and Rich from River City Pen Co. Amazing lobster roll. And then I think the tiredness caught up to me because I wanted to go and hang out with some people and we went to the after hours or the pen show after dark that was in the showroom with the, I think, um, the San Francisco planner community. Um, and I f forgive me if I got the name wrong, but by that point I'm exhausted. So here I am, I've packed my stuff as most, as best as I can. And I'm going to bed because I've got an early flight tomorrow, but I'm so glad I came. So, so glad I came. And I am so happy with the way that this turned out. And I'm going to be riding a high from this pen show for a while, for a while. And for anyone who's ever scared of going to a pen show, I am an introvert, but Drew said something that really hit with me. There are certain people that hype you up, even as an introvert, and that give you energy. And for him, and I discovered that for me as well, it's the pen and planner community. And while I am physically exhausted, I am very, mentally fulfilled and yeah, I feel, I feel great. I really feel great. All right, I am off to bed. And then the next time you see me, I will be unboxing my haul. I just came home maybe about a couple of hours ago and I was so excited to film this. So one of the first things I want to show is just all the stickers that I got. This was from uh, Drew. He was the first person I ran into at the hotel and wow. So then that was from Esterbrook, 
Fountain Telling, who is the daughter of Jonathan Brooks of Carolina Pen Company. I don't remember where that's from. Oh, I think that's Heinz. I can't remember. And Heinz Pen Company, and then Simona or Simone. And then I believe this is also uh, Fountain Pen Company. I can't remember where that one is from. And then World Sound was somebody else that I had met. This one was from Pam, from Old Lady with a Camera. So thank you so much for that. And then we have Pen Friends, uh, Pen Paper Plans. Oh, that's the plastic bag falling on the floor. Another one from uh, Drew. And then this one, Be Original. I, be oh, I can't remember where that's from. Hold on, who's that from? Is that Franklin Crystal? I can't remember, so many stickers. And then I believe this one was also from Pam. And then a couple more from Heinz. They're awesome. And then this one was from uh, the Rickshaw Pen Company. So those are all the stickers that I think, I, oh, wait. But there are also a few behind my badge. So there's the business card for Atelier Lousteau, his sticker and his sticker. And then just showing off my badge because I purchased an all access pass to get earlier access. So there's my badge and then a few pins, which thankfully made it through security. <laughs> so those are all my stickers. And what I'm planning to do, I'm not actually going to put them into my B6 Galen leather notebook. I'm actually gonna start putting these on my suitcase because how cool to show off the places that I've been with stickers and put them on my suitcase. All right, so let's move on to the next thing. So quickly wanted to show you, I brought my Galen leather B6 notebook with Tamori River paper with me because I wanted to test out different nibs and also do some stamping from the Traveler's Notebook table. But I was able to test out a whole bunch of different pens. Like I wanted to test out what a Leonardo was like and I really liked the fine nib. Let's zoom in I really here. enjoyed the fine nib and the Leonardo. And then I wanted to try out a Pelican M800 to see how it would feel in the hand. And I really liked how it felt in the hand. Probably the best size for me out of all the Pelicans. And that's how the extra fine wrote. And then I decided to try the, the Ikaku. So it's the, no, the Norwal brand of gold nib pens. And they were very smooth, very, very lovely. And then I tried out some different grinds from the Heinz pen table. So they had a Kadachi grind, which was done by, I believe it was Matthew, Corolla, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, it was Matthew who did a Kadachi grind, a beak point, which was so fun. So those were two different grinds that I tried. And you, with the Kadachi, you can really tell in the Ks. Whereas with the beak point, it's, it's a nib that is pointed like this. So you've got a nib that normally looks like that, but the Kadachi nib is, this front part is actually bent down opposite of a Fude nib. So you get a really, really fine point when you're writing the, I guess, correct way. And then reverse writing, you get those really fat lines. And then uh, there was also an ultra extra fine and I was not a fan of that at all. <laughs> So then the other things that I wanted to try out, Pilot had their whole selection of nibs there. So I really wanted to try out the extra fine and a vanishing point because I really like the bounciness and softness of the Pilot vanishing point fine nib, but sometimes it's slightly too, like I wanted to know how fine I could get that, but the extra fine is, I didn't like it. It's just scratchy for me, just too, too fine. And then I tried a Pilot Soft Fine nib and that was lovely. But then I tried the Pilot Soft Extra Fine and I did not like it. It did have a little bit of flex, but I found it still to be scratchy. And then I went to Shown Designs table and they had, I think this time last year, introduced their prototype for the Monic nib. And now they, they've introduced it and actually are selling it at a few pen shows now. So I got to try the Monic Fine nib and depending on what angle you're holding it, you do get a slightly different you know, line variation. And then I tried the reverse and it's like a broad, like an architect and it was gorgeous. He, you know, he did such a fine job with designing this nib, but it is a very expensive nib. Um, so it might be something that I'll have to save before for another pen show. And then when I was at Kirk Spears table, I got to try the Needlepoint, which I loved. And then I tried a Waverly, the Tanto, which was not for me. And then when I was at 
no, hold on. This was from the Esterbrook table. I was at the Esterbrook table. Hello. Um, I was speaking with Corolla at the table and I believe Kay was there as well. So hi Kay. And um, I got to try the Kirk Spear Needlepoint, which I loved. Then I tried the, wait, now I'm confused. No, 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 no. Okay. I was at Kirk Spear's table. Scratch that. Yeah, I was at Kirk Spear's table and he had all of these nibs laid out and I got to try them. And so I tried the Needlepoint, the Waverly and the Tanto and the Needlepoint, I really loved that fine line. Uh, and then I, I forget which table that I went to, but I tried a Scribo Extra Extra Fine. And that was, eh, it was okay. It was okay, not my favorite. And then we flip to the next page. I went to the Franklin Kristoff table and tried a few of their nibs. So I tried the fine Sig nib, which is basically similar to a fine CSI, but I, to me, it felt a little bit scratchier. I like my fine cursive smooth italics to be, um, you know, crisp. Like when you do the horizontal stroke, very crisp, but then the downstroke is very smooth. The needle point, Mm, not so much. I preferred Kirk Spears noodle point. And then the extra fine sig is, you know, slightly finer than the fine sig, but still you get that line variation. Then I went to visit Brian at the Esterbrook table and I tried the journaler nib. I was always scared of this one because I, th I think that the journaler nib is going to be just a little bit too broad for me because it's the nib done by Gina Solarino. Of custom nib studio and just look at how big that is compared to for example the fine sig nib by uh, Frank and Christoph and then I tried the scribe nib uh, and I loved that so it's like an everyday use architect nib and it doesn't look like it has as much line variation but it like it's just perfect for my tiny tiny writing and then I got to try the techo nib by CY and it's such a fun pen, but it's not something that I could see myself using on a day-to-day -day basis. It's not a pen, it's not a nib that I would go for on a day-to-day -day basis. And then lastly, I was using the Heinz pen with the extra fine nib that Jim had tuned himself and that was lovely and smooth. So I was so glad that I brought my own notebook and I saw a lot of people that did the same thing because if you are going to try out nibs, it's best to bring your own notebook to do that in so that you have a reference as to what you've tried. But also a lot of people brought their own notebooks because of the ink testing station. And I didn't test any inks. I just wasn't, that felt a bit overwhelming to me. I didn't, I would rather have been talking to people than trying out inks. So I didn't, I didn't take the time to write inks, to test out the inks. I just found it overwhelming. So I, just spent it talking to people. But that is my notebook and I'm so glad that I brought it and it's one thing that I highly, highly recommend that you bring to a pen show. So the first, I think the first official purchase from the San Francisco Pen Show was from Shown Design. Mm, excuse me, spent so much time talking to people this weekend. From Shown Design and he came out with these adapters. So you have one for Sailor, you have one for Pilot because it has the engraving on there for pilot and then here you have the engraving the s for sailor and then you have one for yovo as well basically you um stick these on your pen for easy cleanup and i know katie of baker lane studio has already I believe, featured these on her uh youtube so i'm going to link her down in the description below but i went to his table and tried the monarch nib and i loved it but it was something that I didn't have budget for at the pen show, so I didn't purchase it, but it's something that I will definitely be on the lookout for in the future. But I just couldn't wait to purchase this because this is such an easy way of cleaning out a pen rather than twisting the converter in and out, in and out. So this is, oh, I'm so, so excited for these now. I asked for the syringes just because I thought it might be easier, but I also have bigger syringes that may fit on these. So, you know, you, you do what works for you. All right, so that was the first purchase. The second purchase was actually this nib from Kirk Spear of Pen Realm. He posted on Instagram if anybody wanted to purchase these specific Yovo nib. Well, you could choose either Yovo or Bach, but they have the special engraving for the San Francisco Pen Show 2023 on there. And I got this in an extra fine. So I can basically screw this in into any pen that will take a Yovo nib. So I picked that up from Kirk when I had my appointment with him. And then I had 
four pens ground. So I had my Pelican M400 tuned and smooth and now it writes beautifully. I was having a tiny bit of an issue with it and I didn't want to do anything to it myself, but now it's just, it writes like butter. And then my Sailor Monyo Nuts. It, it felt very feedbacky and to the point of scratchy. So he tuned and smoothed that and now it just writes beautifully. And then I had the F3 pens actually tuned and smooth as well because after it came back, I think the tines were slightly misaligned and uh, he was able to fix that. And now it again writes just gorgeous. And then you can see some of the ink that we dipped it in to test it. And then the last one that I had done was my Le Bon Rosa. And the reason that I had this done was because this originally came with a medium nib, but it was just so wet and juicy that um, I had trouble using it with my teeny tiny writing. So I had him ground this down to, it was, it's basically like a Sailor medium fine or an X or even a fine. And it's still wet and juicy, but it's still got, now got that fine, finer line. And oh God, I'm so excited that I'm talking so fast that I'm out of breath. But I really enjoyed my experience with Kirk because he worked so quickly. Like I got four pens done in the span of like 15, 20 minutes. And you can watch him work, but also he hands you the pen, lets you try it out. And then you can give it back and say, actually, it needs a little bit more of this, a little bit more of this. And he just tweaks it right then and there. So, you know, if you're ever, if you ever get a chance to go to a pen show, definitely book a time with a Nibmeister because the ability to give immediate feedback then and there on your pens is invaluable because a lot of these Nibmeisters have a huge wait time if you're sending out pens to them. Whereas at a pen show, it's right then and there. Love that. So that was the second purchase. Actually, that wasn't a purchase. That was from the Coffee Monsters Co. But that's what I brought my pens in that I needed to and smoothed. And then I ran into Pam, which is an old lady with a camera. And she just handed me this plus some chocolate and plus some stickers. And she was like, here you go. And I'm so excited for this. I haven't even gone through any of them yet. I won't be swatching these today. I will probably swatch them in a separate video or do them in 30 inks, 30 days. But thankfully these went through security because I had to carry these on. These went through security, absolutely fine. But thank you so much, Pam. Ooh, I think that's Lam Lamy by Rin Pink. But some of these I've never heard of or tried. Like there's a Jin Hao brand here. There's, oh, what is that one? Like these will be so interesting to go through. There are so many in here that I will not go through these now. This will be a separate video. And seeing as how many are in here, that will probably be another long ink swatching video. So watch out for that. So thank you again, Pam, for sending the, or giving this to me at the show. One of the things that I absolutely loved about the show is seeing people and meeting people and having people go up to you and you're like, I know you. And being able to put a face and a voice to a name because on Instagram, you know, many of us don't put our faces on Instagram. Many of us just post our pens or our planners. Somebody came up to me, I think it was, um, I'm gonna mention Asha, came up to me when I was talking to Drew Brown and she's like, I recognize you. Well, I recognize your hands because <laughs> so, my hands are what feature most in my videos. So it was, I found that so fun because that was so welcoming. It, it made me feel so welcome to an event that I was so terrified and anxious about. So just a note on that. I, I will have a little bit more to say about that as well. But thank you again, Pam. And then I visited Toyoka Craft and they make some of the most beautiful wood pen um, shelves and drawers and I wanted to buy something but a lot of the I, I, there was no way I could have transported a big pen shelf home but I thought how beautiful is this wooden pen rest for two pens this was $40 and it is just beautiful like look at the detail and I'm just going to show you all the wood pieces on my desk currently I'm taking the camera off you could see that's from Fountain Pendulum, Fountain Pendulum, from Gale and Leather, and then from Toyoka Craft. And I mean, they don't all perfectly match, but you can tell that I have a thing for all of the wood pieces. So that is from Toyoka Craft. 
and I'm just in love with that. Like it's such a smooth finish and it just makes the pens look so classy sitting on there. Look at that. Oh, love it. So now to the pens. There are two here. I only planned on purchasing one and now I have two. <laughs> so I will show you the first one. The first one is from the company Atelier Lousseau um, by Eric Sands. And with the pen, I got this rickshaw sleeve, but I had seen his pens on Instagram leading up to the San Francisco pen show. And actually this was Eric's first pen show, I believe since COVID. Um, and it's been a while since he's been to one. I'm so glad he was here but I've been admiring his beautiful pens on Instagram for a little while now, but they were a little bit out of my price range, but for the San Francisco Pen Show, I had been saving up to be able to have budget for this. And when I had my time at the, you know, during 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. for the all access, I visited all the vendors and I spoke to Eric personally and I looked at all his pens. I looked at this one and I said, you know what? I need to do my rounds. I need to think about it. If it's still here when I come back, I will consider it again. And then I think I came back another time and then said, you know what? I need another time to think about it. And then I went for lunch with Carola and she, um, well, I said, if it's there, great if it's not that's okay too just that just means it wasn't meant to be and it was like I was talking myself down from getting so disappointed if it wasn't there but we came back after lunch and it was there and I'm so so happy because look oh my gosh the colors even look different on camera it looks more vibrant with the light but this is I believe the Karina 15 model and the Hepalua with the abalone shell. But also look at the detail of the metal works. Like look at just the finish on that clip. Gorgeous. And then you've got his logo on the finial, but then you've also got the beautiful white. How gorgeous is that pen? And then every time somebody asks me, did you buy something? I'm like, yes, let me show you. And even at one point I came back, I was doing another round and I came back to Eric's table and Drew Brown was standing there. So I had to show Drew the pen that I bought and Drew actually held this pen as well. And was like, oh my gosh, but look at that. Isn't that stunning? Now it does come with a Yovo nib that has the Atelier Lousseau uh, logo on there. It. it is a bigger pen. I, I do have to give it that. It is a bigger pen. I'm going to actually line it up with some other pens right now. One sec. So there is the Atelier Lousseau. There is a Le Bon 325. Let me take out some other ones here. There is an Esterbrook Esty, which is the pen that I compare all pens to now. And then I will compare it to Pelican M605, a Sailor Pro Gear, and I want to compare it to my Le Bon, which is also a big pen. And one more pen I want to compare it to is a bigger pen, the Leonardo Momento Zero Grande 2.0. So you can see how big this pen is. And actually, I thought this uh, Karina Hepalua was going to be bigger than the Leonardo, but let's move that out of the way. You can see that the Leonardo Momento Zero Grande 2.0 is still bigger, but in terms of the width, you can see that this is probably the girthiest pen that I have. So it is definitely wider than the Momento Zero Grande 2.0, as well as the SD and even the Le Bon. So let's look at these uncapped. So you can see that in, the, uh, in terms of length, the Momento Zero Grande 2.0 is, is slightly shorter than the um, Karina Hepalua and definitely longer than the Esterbrook Esty and just slightly longer than the Le Bon 325. So it is quite a big pen. I won't do a full review on this pen, but I just want to show you the beautiful craftsmanship that's in here. Now, 
I asked Eric if he did this type of style with any of the smaller models and he said because of what's in the body, like within the body itself, you won't be able to see it, but there is brass in here that allows the uh, abalone to look the way that it does. And he has to have a specific thickness in order to be able to fit all of the material in there. So that is why it's such a big pen and it comes with a converter. And I don't think you can eyedropper this because of the material on the inside. So I wouldn't recommend eyedroppering it, eyedroppering, eyedropping it. Um, and then in terms of capping, yeah, definitely not postable and like, look at how huge that is, but I would be too scared of scratching that anyway. And it's just stunning. I mean, I could just stare at it over and over, but I did, you know, hold it in my hand and write with it a bit. And I, I mean, it is big, but it's not heavy. It's not so weighted that it hurts my hand. And, you know, this does with... You know, this does come with a higher price tag, but that is because of the material, that is because of the amount of work that this takes. Like there's a lot more detail in this. Oh, I cannot stop looking at that. So this was, this was my BAM pen from the pen show. I couldn't stop thinking about it. I kept going back to it and I knew it was gonna be a bit more expensive, but I had saved up the money for it. And I am so, so happy with this. Mm. So I didn't say, but I got a fine Yovo nib to go with that. Oh, lovely, lovely. And Eric was just so lovely to speak to. And just, it, it makes a difference for me to be able to speak to the maker. Now, not just over Instagram, but you know, in person as well. So that is my pen from Atelier Lusso. Mm -hmm. And then the unexpected purchase from Heinz Handcrafted Pens. And I fully blame Francisco and Jenny. They are amazing salespeople, but also really fun to hang out with. I came back to Jim's table maybe four times throughout the day, not just to look at the pens, but also to hang out with Francisco and Jenny because they were just so cool. And I saw Nadia collects at the table too with her puppy, Larry. Oh, okay. But now I have to show you this. I remember, you know, after I had purchased this, Jim asked me, he said, did you choose a pen? And when I showed him what I chose, he's like, I knew it was going to be that one because you picked that one up every single time you stopped by at the table. And I'm like, damn, 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 damn. So this particular blank is actually not one that Jim's wife made because now she actually makes and pours her own, pours the blanks for Heinz. But this one was actually from a um, Diamond Cast subscription. So there are no other, there were no other pens that looked like this at the show. And you've got the metal clip here, which is actually quite good. But there's also the feature where you can take the finial off and replace it with a different color clip. And that's actually one of the features of Heinz pens is that they have different color clips and different color nibs. Before I show that though, look at the branding am i showing that properly yes there's the branding on the top of the finial but look at this this is like pink and purple and gold and super beautiful and super fun look at just the sparkle and the different shades of purple and mauve and dusty pink cannot get over that. I did keep picking this pen up and just twirling it in my hand and then putting it back. So I'm like, no, I already bought a pen. So what sold it for me? Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Kind of leaked. Oh gosh. It did leak. Now I have to clean that. Oh goodness. What sold it for me was that nib. I'm going to clean that quickly. Hold on. Okay. So I was able to wash that off. It looks like the converter inside leaked, but anyway, Look at this beautiful nib. This is one of the specialties of Heinz uh, Pen Company is that they have, or Heinz Handcrafted Pens, is that they have different colored nibs to match your pen body. I know Corolla got a pen called Leonardo da Pinci um, because of the shape of the pen and the nib that she got was a red plated nib. So it's a Yovo nib, but it's been plated with a different color to match. And the name of this color is Pepto, like Pepto-Bismol. And it just matches the pen 
perfectly. And Jim uh, had already done some tuning and smoothing of this extra fine nib. So it is beautiful. Now I won't do writing samples with the pens that I purchased because I won't be inking them up and like, look at me, I'm covered. But I just wanted to show you how beautiful is this pen. And I did rinse it out so it's still a little bit wet, but look at that in comparison to, I'm gonna compare it to the Atelier Lusso because it is big. Woo! So like in terms of length, they're actually very similar. And then if I compare it again to the Esterbrook SD, again, very similar in length. Wow, those actually look exactly the same. The SD is probably slightly, no, nope, they're the same. And then the Leonardo Memento Zero Grande 2.0. So you know what? This length in pen seems to work really well for me, but you can tell this pen is definitely more in line with the width of the Esterbrook SD, which is probably why I liked it so much. And another reason that I liked it is that when I hold the pen, it's very comfortable in my hand. It does have a little bit of a step here. I am so sorry about that ink, but it does have a little bit of a step here but it's not uncomfortable. It's actually very comfortable in my hand and absolutely beautiful. I'm sorry, that is distracting to me. <laughs> okay, so, oh, that is the beautiful pen that is unnamed. There's no name for this blank. It's just a Heinz pen for me with a Pepto colored nib. And you know, sometime in the future, if there is maybe even a gold clip that goes with it, because I think a gold clip would look really well with those yellow sparkles yellow shimmer oh so so pretty and uh francisco and jenny were just they were just uh, so great to talk to but also you know the marketing francisco was like the social and the marketing behind the the brand and jim is also such a lovely lovely person so all right so these are my two pens from the San Francisco pen show. I only came away with two pens. I didn't buy any ink, but I mean like from what Pam gave me, I didn't really need to buy any. And I'm really happy with I came, with what I came away with. You know, I got my Heinz pen, but also I spoke to the owner and the people who work for the company. I got my Atelier Lusso and I love that I got to speak with Eric. And then I got my pens tuned and smoothed and ground by Kirk Spear of Pen Realm, as well as buying that nib. And then I got to try the Monic nib from Shown Design, but then also buy his adapters. Is that all I bought? That is all I bought. But I'm happy with that. I'm, I did go a little bit over budget on what I spent because I don't think I budgeted. I didn't budget for this. That wasn't in the budget. <laughs> Um, so really the only things that weren't in the budget were this and this, oh, and where'd it go? Oh, <laughs> and the Teoka Craft Pen Rest. But overall, I'm really happy with this haul. I didn't want more than this number of pens and I wasn't, I wasn't on the market for any inks. So I'm really happy with what I came away with. I had a fantastic, fantastic experience. And I would highly recommend this for anybody to just try out a pen show, go with a friend who you've already been abled and just go at your own pace. Take lots of breaks and go at your own pace. But also know that like, because the pen show is open all day, like from 8 a.m. Well, if you have an all access pass, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. on the Saturday, you have plenty of opportunity to leave the show, come back, etc., etc. So, all right, but that is it for me. I hope this gave you a glimpse into the San Francisco Pen Show. I didn't film as much as I thought I would just because I spent more time talking to people and really trying to soak in the experience, but I hope it gave you an idea as to what to expect when you go to a pen show. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks again for watching and have yourselves a great day.